Welcome to this week's episode of True Hauntings YouTube edition. And what are we looking at this week, Renata? We are looking at the story of the poltergeist from Australia, Humpty Doo. Oh, Humpty Doo. This is one of my favourites. I just loved the whole background story behind this one. I'm Anne. And I'm Renata. And welcome to this week's episode of True Hauntings YouTube edition. This story takes us back to 1978 when a weird and spooky thing started to happen mm. at 90 McMinn's Drive. Yes, and we have Jill Somerville and Dave Clark who moved into the house and then they looked for some roommates to share the rent and they got in Andrew and Kirsty Agus, their little daughter Jasmine. Yeah. And not long after that, shit started to happen. Mm. So it started off with like gravel falling from the ceiling, then they started having projectiles. That's like, true poltergeist activity. Yeah, yeah yep. they had like glass and bottles and knives and they actually felt like they were under attack sometimes. Yes, they did. And weird stuff like a gravel that would create different patterns that would take forever if you tried to do it like yourself. If you tried to do it yourself, yeah. Yeah. That but goes they, on a little bit further. But they yeah. actually had spelt out words, yes. some of these patterns. And um, I remember them telling the story how they walked down the hallway. They're having a party. They walked down to go and have um, a dump in the toilet on <laughs> old class and came back and found these words written there. There was no yeah. time that anyone could have uh, placed the pebbles yeah. to form these words. And it was uh, fire, skin, car, help. And the last word was the word that gave them to the clue as to what might have been going on, Troy. Now, sadly, not long after they moved into this house, uh, their friend Troy Raditz uh, was incinerated in a horrible, yeah. horrible car accident only a few kilometres from the house. So they were starting to think that maybe this was a message mm. coming from Troy. They brought in a priest, Father D'Souza. They brought in several priests. Now, this particular priest, though, was really an interesting bloke. He mm. thought outside the square. Mm. So this is a very different way of reacting to a poltergeist activity from someone who is from a more religious kind a of Jesuit, perspective. Think, yes, he was a Jesuit. Yeah. So it's yep. Father Stephen de Sousa yep. he, from St Mary's? He actually was attacked while he was in there. He walked in the kitchen mm. and he found that there was a knife on the microwave. And as he was talking to the family, the knife elevated, levitated mm. up and came straight towards his chest and just stopped in midair. How did it like flew with force and yeah. then just stopped? Yep. Like it hit an invisible wall. Yep. And he stood his ground. Yep. That would have been as scary as I don't all know, I think I would have hell. been out of there at that stage. Yeah. So he uh, performed some prayers and yes. things apparently quietened down for yeah, a little bit yep, after that yep. and then it kicked off again. Yes, it did. So then Father Tom English came in and he attempted to remove the poltergeist as With well. With an exorcism. Yeah. So the, the uh, polt, as they like to call it, didn't take kindly to anyone trying to no. exorcise it. Please notice today's T-shirt about exorcisms. Thank you. Um, so he had things thrown at him, witnessed many uh, encounters as well. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, all of this time, they have a tiny little child in the house. The child was never affected. No. At any point in time, the poltergeist did not go near the child's bedroom or have anything to do with the little one, which was quite interesting. So then they had a third priest minister come in and now we've gone on to the Greek Orthodox. Now this fellow was... Um, pretty determined to get rid of the poltergeist, but once again, Polt didn't take kindly. He walked through the house with a big black book reciting prayers, and the witnesses said that he was assaulted and pushed and bashed, and it looked like somebody was trying to pull the book out of his hands. Mm. They actually kept that book, and it became one of the poltergeist's favourite things to throw around the house. <laughs> Generally, when they read from that, the poltergeist would act up. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it acted up more once they had some beer in them as well. Because, mm -hmm. mm. I mean, we are in Australia here. I certainly You've got to have do a beer up, up in the Northern Territory. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. The thing is that, of course, in a small town like Humpty Do, everyone would know what was going on, mm -hmm. especially after three p priests had visited a house. And so the local Litchfield Times oh. got this story and put it up in the newspaper and then... We know, all know what happens when the media gets hold of things. Mm, Channel 7 got on board yes. and Channel 7 sent up its crew and reporters to report on this story. Now, d people would think, oh yes, they've probably been paid um, a shitload of money to come and do this, but they actually didn't. It, I think all up it was $4,000 yeah. to have people invade their home yeah. for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, and um, the poltergeist didn't like this at all. Uh, he or she or it uh, wasn't a fond of having cameras in its no. face or in its territory. They actually had messages coming through that said no cameras, no TV and pig camera. And the phenomena would always happen just off camera, which we still find today yes. is what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and after being there for two weeks, they caught one thing that was thrown. Yeah. And they decided that um, Kirsty was in the other room ironing and um, they thought that she might have been able to throw it, but apparently the trajectory of this thing, it, she could not have thrown it. Yeah. But today, tonight, took the story. Yeah. Look, there was one incident because I think the family got really, um, and this is kind of my theory from what I was reading, the family got really upset that over the two weeks that the uh, TV crew was there, nothing really happened. No, they couldn't capture anything. Well, they they had plenty of experiences, but happening. nothing. Uh, and so they did say that there was one incident where they caught one of the household actually create some phenomena. But that's the one I was talking about, that yeah. they, they put one thing on camera and they they blamed they, it they on been, her. They debunked everything after yeah, that. Uh, yeah. And then once, once they think that there's one thing that's been faked, they just say everything's faked. But yeah. the, the actual crew themselves said the house was amazing. There was so much phenomena going on. But um, the, it was easier for today, tonight, to make the, the people living in the house look like idiots. And that's that's basically what, down, what went down. And the residents of the home became so angry. And I don't blame them because now everyone in the town was calling them liars. And, uh, and it was at this stage that two um, Australian para psychologists, para paranormal yep. researchers yep. turned up who just happened to be in the area, and that was Tony Healy and Paul Cropper. Yes. And knocked on the door and said, oh, I believe you've got a poltergeist. Can we come and uh, and talk to you about it? And Dave the bikey was not real happy and gave no. them a few choice words, told them to fuck off. Um, but once they explained that they have witnessed this phenomena before and they believed them, then they let them into the house. Yeah. And uh, they were terrified. They had to sleep on the lounge in the house. Uh, they had things thrown them as well. Uh, they did have experiences. Yeah. They truly believed that there was something very, very supernatural going on in that house. They've actually written a book about poltergeists uh, and that story is included. Mm. Um, so they still very much today believe that the phenomena were quite real. But you know that the phenomena actually started with Kirsty and uh, Andrew before they even moved into this house. They had experiences. Yes, yes, they were in, an, in another home. Yes, they Closer were. to where we live, actually, weren't they? On the well, no, there coast. was one before that. There was one when they were in a town called Bachelor in Northern Territory, and mm -hmm. apparently they were both known for their very racist views on Aboriginals and um, were quite verbal about it. And there was an instance that they were having stones thrown at their house and they assumed it was the local Aboriginal kids. Uh, mm. And there was one night Andrew went out and hid in the bushes in his camouflage gear to catch who the bastard was that was doing it. And uh, he never actually managed to find out who it was, but still these stones were being thrown into the house. And there was another time when Kirsty was in Central Coast, yes. which is near us, mm -hmm. and um, she had some stuff go down. But I'm not going to tell you about that. You'll have to listen to the podcast. Mm. I can't give you all my secrets. Mm. There is an Aboriginal connection to the property, mm -hmm. the 90 McMinns Road. Yeah, but uh, in the end, they they tried to exercise the ghost themselves, mm. and they did what I call oh, the Bogan exorcism. 
and I have actually read it out for you at the end of the podcast That's as a choice. little bit of an Easter egg. It's choice. Thoroughly recommend you go and uh, listen to that one. Mm. Everything that went on there was really very much such normal poltergeist activity when we hear about these stories. CD players going off and being turned up loud, like you said, things being thrown. Um, one of the most amazing things is the writing on the walls that would appear all the time. Mm -hmm. It was like the poltergeist actually used the walls of the house as its um, piece of paper and was writing all of this information up um, and directions about what it wanted and what it didn't want. So was it Kirsty that was having some sort of yeah. psi ability or was it Troy or who was it? Don't know, but if you haven't listened to our podcast, you'll be able to find out all our theories. So make sure you join us. Don't forget, search for True Hauntings on iTunes, Spotify, or your favourite podcast player. <laughs> <laughs>